This is Louis D. Fresh bringing it to you on a whatever day it is. Wednesday. I hope you're doing well. My hat is backwards so it doesn't fly away and it's a little chilly out. But um, I wanted to shoot a little video. I, I was thinking about doing a, a th quick 60 second thing. But I think I'll do a short abbreviated uh, YouTube video. Um, I may do two YouTube videos. I'm not sure depending on how my time is. But uh, I wanted to show you this lake. Uh, it's a different lake. It's uh, it's in upstate Florida, and uh, let me put down my, my little folder here. It's in upstate Florida. The reason I'm, I'm showing it to you is I told you I'd be at a conference, and sometimes these lakes can be a lot larger than um, you know than than, than what you, you you normally see. So, like I said, this is a much larger lake, uh, as you can see. You see the positioning there of the sun. They're saying sunset is beautiful. You see how the how beautifully the sun reflects. Uh, that's something you also may want to take into account when you're looking at your fish tanks. Uh, if you have them outside, how much sun do you get? And again, because I know that one of the problems with fish tanks is uh, people say, oh, you know, I get too much algae and all that. Why do you want to mimic what's going on in nature? You don't want to keep the sun, the light, your LED lights on too long. I know I still have to talk about LED lights, but I want you to notice, uh, as with anything with nature, it's not, nothing's really uh, completely you know, perfect as it were. There, there's beauty in its, uh, in its imperfections, dare I say. But moving onward, I wanted to show you, and I was waiting for people to kind of disappear because I didn't want to sound a complete lunatic, was uh, if you look, and I'm gonna try to blow it up. It, well, let me see if I can get a better better shot, maybe here, maybe here, because the sun is, is more angled here. Let me try to blow it up carefully. You notice here, this is Jungle Valley. This is all the jungle valve that is in my 75 gallon uh, community fish tank. You see here, that's pretty, pretty amazing. I think that was the one thing that fascinated me was all the jungle valve. And I want you to also notice, I also have driftwood in there. And there you go, there's authentic driftwood. And therefore also, because the driftwood is there, let me, let me blow it up a little bit more. You see the driftwood? The driftwood also, you see it colors the water also kind of a tan color because there's so much driftwood available here you see all that all that wood so that also will color the water um so i think that that's pretty cool now i want to also continue with the same theme i want you to notice if you look carefully you don't see any fish i even said but what's 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 the point the temperature here we're talking about fahrenheit now has been in the um, you know the, here where I am it's been in the mid 40s in the morning uh, Fahrenheit and it goes up to the upper 60s so that's kind of chilly for these tropical fish because this is still this is still Florida and it's still a subtropical climate so you may say well where are all the fish same thing I observed and I have to give a follow-up with my um, with my Japanese rice fish is that they are not here. You say, well, well, where are they go? They disappear. They they went out to lunch. What, what's going on? Is that they are at the bottom? They are at the bottom. Why? Because they are they are partially hibernating. I did not know that. With uh, I've been doing some research on the Japanese rice fish, and they they definitely do some hibernating. They'll go towards the bottom where it's a little bit warmer than the top, and they'll they'll kind of hang out at the bottom, and their metabolism will slow down to the point where they are they're not feeding. They're not, they're, they're not eating, their, their metabolism slows down. Anything like below 60 Fahrenheit, the Fahrenheit their, their metabolism will, will start to shut down and they'll get into sort of hibernation mode. And that's really what the fish are right now. They're, they're kind of hibernating, they're hibernating. And here's what's also kind of interesting as the wind blows. I, I'm showing this angle because that's, that's where most of the, where the jungle valve is, is um, I noticed that with my Japanese rice fish. That they are more or less hibernating at this t at this juncture, and in the summertime you'll see more. If you be able to just go like this, like this, you'll be able to see a lot more fish because they'll be at the top seeking that oxygen-rich water. And so I think that let me let me make it uh, blow it back out. I think that that's very interesting. And again, I really try to emphasize the the importance of seeing things in its natural natural state. Uh, whether it be your college, whether it be your fish, uh, really, really important to see how things things actually work and uh, how, how uh, Mother Nature takes care of itself. And that's what the fish are doing right now. They're, they're hibernating, they're hanging out. And the jungle valve 
which I, I find to be beneficial, especially in, in this climate. It's, it's really, really hot most of the year. And this jungle bell handles it. And it also handles this colder water, this colder weather. So there you go. Very authentic view of what really goes on in a lake and what should be going on in your aquarium. Make sure, again, paying attention to what kind of fish you have. You don't want to just stick uh, driftwood in there because I've noticed that with my uh, Japanese rice fish, that'll actually kill my Japanese rice fish having uh, driftwood. They're more of a, of a neutral slash alkaline type of fish. So at Gibat, like I said, there's lots of different uh, different fish, like a tetra, um, you know, that will, will, will uh, and a barb. I will, will love that. And you'll notice here also, you can see getting ideas of what your fish tank could look like. You could have plants kind of hanging out, partially kind of, uh, you know, plant trees, kind of like, you know, stuff sticking out of the fish tank. Nothing wrong with that. And you'll see, you see the separations here. It's just very, very natural. And it gives you good ideas of what to do with your fish tank. That's all I got. I don't, I don't want to, you know, kind of bore you with all this, but I, I think it's really important. I, I, I can't emphasize it enough. Go out in nature. Same thing with college. Go out and visit your schools because uh, that's that's how you really get to decide whether, hey, I really do want to go to that school or not. Go visit it. Same thing with your your, uh, your aquariums. And most of them, most people I know have indoor aquariums, but get out there. See see what, what Mother Nature has going on. What, what Mother Nature is using as plants, what Mother Nature is doing with this fish, uh, and, and you, you'll get a better perspective of, uh, of what you should be doing with your aquarium. This is Louis D. Fresh.